everybody. Guess what? If I can push the button correctly, it's me. I'm Alec Bennett. This is about the 10th time we tried to get this program going tonight. Uh, I, I hope, you know, the big network people aren't listening and saying, well, if that's as good as it gets, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll forget about it. But anyway, they aren't, and nobody pays attention to this show, and uh, somehow neither do I. Anyway... <laughs> oh God! This thing—it's just a—it's just a clusterfuck tonight. Anyway, we've got a guest, and he's going to be here now. And I'm going to push a button, and uh, you're going to hear a previously recorded interview. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from San Francisco, California. Hey, you're wearing the jacket today. I am. I'm spiffed up. Why are you spiffed up? Is there a reason? Uh... Uh, no, it was running late, and this was uh, the closest thing I found. Oh, I see. Okay. And uh, you wrote me last night that you had to do this a little earlier because you had car- you have car problems? Yes, yes. I have to uh, drop my car off at my mechanic this morning. I see. And, and what is wrong with your car? Suspension. <laughs> it's got 150,000 miles on it. Oh, I see. Okay. What kind of car is it? Uh, it's a, a 2006 Acura TL. Really? Yes, I had uh, I had uh, I had a uh, what was the, what's the highest Acura at this point? TR, I think it was. RL. RL. That's what I had when I was oh. in San Francisco. When when I used to have the money to have that kind of car. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, mine was a lease though. I, I don't. It doesn't sound like yours is a lease. Twelve years? No. 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 No, it's uh, and it's dribbling and drabbling me to death. Oh, so oh, oh, I, I really? don't know if I'm gonna keep it. I don't know if I'm gonna lease or buy. I have no idea. I, they want to really want you to lease, and I always find that leasing is really a stupid idea. Why? Well, because you, first of all, you put down like about twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars. All right? right, and then right. you get say you get thirty six months. And then if you go over a certain amount of mileage, right. you start paying for every mile after that. And I found living in the Bay Area, I could I could get that mileage going pretty fast. So I found I, I had two cars. Sometimes I wouldn't use that car because the mileage was, you know. Right, right. So yeah. they don't give you an adequate amount of mileage, say, for the Bay Area. It might be the adequate yeah. amount of mileage for New York City where you might use the car once a month. <coughs> you know. You have to negotiate that. Can, when you sit down and you talk to the guy. Oh, you can negotiate that? You can negotiate that. I didn't yeah. know you could negotiate that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but I love those Acuras. They're a great car. Well, it's lasted forever, and uh, the mechanic says the engine is good to go, but uh, everything else is falling apart. It's kind of like saying, you know, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your brain is going, but the rest of your body is in perfect shape. <sighs> well, the opposite, but yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and it, it, you know the tr- uh, I haven't owned a car since two thousand four. <coughs> y- you know, uh, what do you what, <laughs> you rent or do you do city car or uh, if I need a car, I will rent it. Now here's here's the here's the rub though. Like we you're were renting gonna, in New York City. Yeah, but here's the rub. Like we're going up to Vermont to see some friends for a couple of days. So I wanted to rent the rent a car to drive up there. All right, okay. the rent the uh, lease on the car for a you know a mid sized car, right? Uh, Seven hundred dollars for the three days. You're renting out of New York. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. But hold on. Then I checked. What if I rent it for a week, and it's three hundred dollars? <laughs> Now, number one, that makes no sense whatsoever, okay? Because it's not like they're getting the use of the car for those extra four days, right? So uh, our next year, what we're going to do is we're going to take the whole week off, right? And we're going to, like, go see our friends in Vermont, and then we're going to drive around for a week (laughs) and do it for 300 bucks. I mean... It's it's ridiculous, but it's like the old days with flying. You remember the old days with flying? If you did a round yeah. trip, it was it was much cheaper than if you did it one way. Saturday night stay. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so 
Uh, yeah, that, that, San Francisco, it's even because uh, they keep putting taxes yeah. on the car rentals and the hotel rooms because they know that the city people are not going to object because they're never touched because you hardly ever rent the car. you know. Right. So they have all these taxes when you rent the car at the airport. But the airport is set up for business uh, rental cars. So if you want to rent a car during the week for one or two days, you go to the interior city rental places, and they're much cheaper. But if you want to rent a car for a weekend, which starts on Thursday and ends on Monday, it's much cheaper at the airport. So you have to know all this shit. <laughs> Where's the consistency? That's what I want to know. Where is the fucking consistency? The consistency is screw the consumer. <laughs> so however the consumer can get screwed, they're going to find a way. Yeah. So anyway, how you doing? Otherwise, uh, you know, the little uh, comedy uh, comedy thing you do. Uh, um, it's uh, probably on vacation right now, right? <laughs> oh, no. It's every Tuesday I'm doing tonight uh, my little show. A uh, Durst case scenario. I keep last, telling you, uh, don't call it a little show. Call it a mammoth spectacular. Yeah, my little show. <laughs> is, uh, uh, it's going up and uh, got a good, a semi good, semi decent review in the uh, Chronicle last week. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought more press people were going to show up, but I guess not. What do you so, mean a semi decent review? Uh, remember the little man? Mm -hmm. He's clapping and sitting up in his chair, but he's not flying out of his chair. Oh, I see. Okay, well, you'll you need, accept that. You need the flying out of the chair. Uh, out of the chair to really draw people. People don't know this, but in the San Francisco Chronicle, it's been a tradition ever since I was a kid. Yeah, where yeah. they would review a movie to the side of the review is a little guy in a chair and sometimes he's jumping out of the chair and sometimes he's applauding and sometimes he's just sitting there and the one you don't want is when he's asleep or he's missing oh they, the they chair do, yes, is yeah. empty yeah. yeah 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 that i suppose if we looked up the emoji movie it would be empty no, uh, the theater reviewer one time, I've never seen this before, she had a, a theater production, and the chair was empty. Yeah. Really? That's, yeah, that's yeah. strict. That's ghastly. Anyway, so uh, what I'm saying is, is, the reason I say you don't have a show is, is our president is on a 17-day vacation. Oh, I, oh, right, yeah. He's, but he uh, hasn't but stopped. it's not a vacation. It's not a vacation. It's a working vacation. It, he's working and he's have meetings and he's taking calls. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Now the question is, working vacation. I can't see that he's done much work anyway. <laughs> Maybe he'll get something done on his vacation. <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll get something done on his vacation. Uh, Maybe uh, yesterday I tweeted out, because I always send out a tweet or a Facebook joke, and yesterday, my joke was, uh, you could take all of Trump's accomplishments and stuff them in a shot glass, and they would still rattle around like a golf ball in a railroad car. <laughs> I liked one you had a couple of weeks ago. I kept quoting it. I'm trying to, I guess I'm going to paraphrase it here, that uh, if we, you know, if with a uh, Democratic Congress, if we decide to impeach him, can he be tried as an adult? <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, 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 that was brilliant. You have to find a way to put that in the show. It's funny, you write all these lines. I wrote a line, and uh, it's uh, it's hard to make Trump jokes because Republicans don't think they're funny and Democrats don't think they're jokes. <laughs> and I wrote it, and I just said it to somebody. They laughed and laughed, and it's very it's very Will Rogers, Mark Twainy, right? Yeah. But I had nowhere to put it in my act, and then... Because uh, I tried to read the act, I tried to read the script every day, and then make notes. Yeah. Here, I'll show you. Yeah. Because we have the visual. So this is this is my little script in eight point font. Yeah. And then and then I make notes, and then I type it up, 
and uh, then I print it out, and then I got a new script. It, it, is, when you do your stuff, you, you've written it ahead of time, because you say you're a writer first. You believe yourself to be a writer first and a comedian second, right? Right. Uh, so you write it all down. Do you do it word for word, or, or you know? Um, I try to memorize it word for word uh, so that it's in, memorize it so well that it's imprinted on my DNA. Yeah. And then once I have it down like that, then boom, I can I can wander around and make shit up and respond in the moment. Yeah. And then go back and I know where and the and the the trick is making those two voices sound similar. Yeah. Making the being in the moment and making shit up and dealing with an audience member, making it have the same pitch and the same use of language. And the same as as when I'm going through my script. So that's that's the hard part. See, my my difference is I have to work ad lib. If I have a script or yeah. something to read, I I or to go by, I I find that difficult. The only time I didn't find it difficult is when I was doing some TV and stuff in San Francisco, and then I'm lousy at memorization. But I I, I learned how to memorize. You almost have to learn how to memorize. You know, and and what you do is you don't try to memorize word for word you try to memorize the idea and then and the, you usually and, it will come out as you wrote it yeah 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 if you, if you have the whole idea in your mind and then the way i memorize it is uh i use phrase by phrase and then i bring them together yeah. and i have mental images that i throw at the end of the last phrase that will get me to the next phrase okay so you, so here you are you're uh, you've written this thing, you've memorized it. Now you go out on stage and you're bombing. What yeah, do you do? What do you do? Yeah. Do you stick to the script or do you go off 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 uh, off script? Oh, uh, well, you have to be in the moment. You have to let the audience know you know you're bombing. Yeah. Uh, usually that will help because they like that that reflection, the fact that you know you're with you're there with them. Mm -hmm. And you're not pretending that everything, you know, like on TV, when you shoot, a, when comics shoot a TV thing, you, it's always the worst because the cameras are between you and the audience. And sometimes the audience can't even see you. And, and, but you have to smile and go on and pretend that you're killing, even if you're not getting laughs, because when they, when they edit it, they will edit at the very beginning before the show even starts they get they get the audience laughing and clapping and they get shots of that and they will fit that into your set so you have to pretend that you are killing <laughs> <laughs> so on a TV thing you're, you're smiling and they're, and they're looking at you <laughs> and I've seen it happen I remember years ago I was watching a Bob Hope special when he was really old and, and really not funny anymore oh, wow, and it was yeah. like one of these uh things where he went out and played to the troops and this was on a ship and uh, he's up there doing his jokes and they are laughing up a storm and then when they take a long shot of the yeah, audience yeah, yeah. From, the, from the back they're not moving they're not, <laughs> they're not yeah. they don't even look like they're chuckling so well anyway so what do you think so far you know over what over a hundred days is it 200. 200 yeah, days. 201 today. I don't yeah. Know. It, uh, it seems like 100 days. It's going so slowly. 200 <laughs> days. 200 days of of uh, this insanity, which has been, of course, a a godsend for you. But and for the rest has of. Been ameliorated since John Kelly became chief of staff. Yeah. I mean, the chaos is uh, has dropped down to confusion. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think Kelly, if if he can develop a stomach for the job, I think he can actually, you know, be the the buffer between uh, Trump and and getting shit done. Well, actually, I think, what I you think I think what you're great. describing him as is the adult in the room. Yeah, the adult supervision. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really if he's doing anything, he's doing that. But the question is, how long will Trump put up with that? Exactly. We, we don't know if Trump's on board. We don't know if he's reluctant. We don't know if he's, 
you know, uh, kind of writhing against the bonds and the binds. I, I, we don't we don't know his mindset. We never know his mindset. He's he's a crazy person. Well, so, here, here's something I asked my audience the other night. Right. And I went person by person. We had about nine people online at the same time. And I went person by person. And I said, you know, we're always bashing Trump. Everybody here, one by one, say something good about him. So, Will Durst, say something good about Donald Trump. Well, you want me to do the Hillary thing? Uh, his family seems to like him. Uh, <laughs> he does pay. Uh, he uh, he does pay uh, close attention to grooming. Uh, <laughs> uh, he spends a lot of time grooming. Um, say something. You know, the New York Times. You know, the Sunday Review. Yeah. They had a segment where they they. They solicited people to write in and say something good about Trump and write an article about it. It lasted three weeks. And all they had were staff writers. Nobody nobody uh, ever came up with anything. I submitted something. I didn't even get a, I didn't even, yeah, not even a, eh. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the, uh, let's see. They came up with one thing. That was what they restored the Woolman Rink in Central Park. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And didn't call it Trump Rink. And he was so, uh, that's why people thought he could get stuff done. Really? Yeah. Yeah, well, you, I, you know, the thing is. He cut through the red tape. He cut through the bureaucracy. And he said, I'll do it. Yeah. But the thing is, if, if you want to be very honest about it, uh, there's a great difference between running a company and running the country. It's it's two entirely different things, and he somehow thinks he can do it like you not even that. not even like running a business, like running his reality show. You know that, and I know that, and a bunch of other people know that. He and his supporters have no idea, no idea. They thought they'd go in. They don't realize that what we see is the tip of the iceberg. Obama. Oh man, they hated Obama, and and you look back now at the scandals that Obama had. Remember, uh, the scandals of Michelle ba oh, Michelle had bared shoulders in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Um, Obama wore a beige suit. Remember that? Yeah, that was one yeah. of the scandals. The, these are the Friend. scandals. Actually, that was a pretty scandal-free uh, administration. You know, I mean, because uh, he got smart. And he got he got people who were kind of, uh, you know, up and up, loyal and trustworthy, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, well, you, kind, you, thrifty, you, obedient, brave, clean, and reverent. You never felt that he ever cheated on Michelle because Michelle would have beaten the crap out of him. <laughs> Big girl. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I mean, they, you know, I mean, for all these people out there, uh, religious nuts and everything, as a good, solid family, these people <laughs> were a brilliant example of it. You know, you couldn't say anything about them as a family, you know, and yet here's Trump who's been married three times and, you know, tells people he wants to touch women's pussies and things like that. And the religious right loves him. Yeah, fuck the religious right. Yeah. Who are you looking at? Yes. <laughs> okay, just, just... Hang on. Okay. Yes. <laughs> she, she's going to ask you a question. I'm a... I'm a I, I'm I, I know, I yes. know. You have to... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that took up almost our 25 minutes. Hello. She told me to give it back to you. And then she hung up. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Can you smudge some of those numbers? No, I can't. No. <laughs> I can't, but, you know, my, my, my uh, don't worry about it. What? You know, they want your Social Security number, they can find it. Right? Right. Yeah. You know, your information, you didn't give them any passwords or anything like that, so you're, you're okay. cool. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, where were we? Uh, talking about Trump. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, Trump doesn't seem to be, understand what the job entails, you know, and neither does the American public who voted for him. They they all like this idea, well, we got a non-politician in there. 
Well, good for you. And next time your pipes go bad, call a non-plumber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's meet your gastroenterologist, shall we? Yeah, yeah. She's a former Oakland Raiderette. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, so you're going for Part D, right? You're, it's, it's that time of your life. The prescription drug thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, now you must have had a birthday recently because you can't, usually can't do that till the first till till December. I think is the sign up date for those things. So was your birthday recently? No, birthday was in March. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, son of a bitch. But D D is just a prescription drug plan. So, yeah. 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 And they take more of that out of your social security. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't really. Yeah, there's a. They already take money out of your social security to pay for your Medicare. Really? You didn't know that? Well, I'm not getting social security yet. Really? Yet you're getting Medicare Part D. How's that? Well, because my generation, uh, when they decided to change social security, uh, they made it so that. I don't get the full benefit of Social Security until the age of 66 years and zero months. Okay. And they moved everybody up like a month. So I think if you're 70, uh, well, you're 12 years older than I am. So it should have started with you. You should not have been able to get your Social Security until you were 65 years in one month. And then the next year, 65 years and two months, and 65 years and three months. And then once it was 66 years, but they still kept Medicare at 65 years. Oh, okay. So so you can get Medicare because you're 65. Right. But you can't get Social Security. Well, I can. I could have gotten early. Yeah. But you lose 8% for every year that you get it early. So you get 100% at the age, I get 100% at age of 66. And if I took it when I was 62, I would lose 8% a year. So I would have gotten, uh, what's uh, four times uh, 32. So I would have gotten 68% of my full. And if I wait till I'm 70, you gain another uh, 8% every year. So uh, if I wait till 70, I will get, 132 percent of my base social security wow okay yeah. because i took it early because i was broke you took it at yeah yeah oh wow and i still get a nice check every month i'm not yeah, yeah well you put it. a lot in i didn't put a lot in a lot of my stuff was under the table oh, uh, well because you were self-employed yeah 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 and and what do we do about those people folks you know so I mean I uh, no I I uh, every job I ever had took out Social Security for the most part, so you know that was paid every year. So I I I you you probably also got a pension. Weren't a lot of those I after? Have a, I have an after a pension, but it only brings me about eight hundred bucks a month because right. I didn't work that much under after. But had I been able to, uh, I could be walking away with a couple of thousand a month, you know, without know. any problem. Um, uh, but, uh, basically most of the after money was earned in my first couple of years in New York city and in Chicago working at after stations. And after that, I didn't work any after stations. So, um, yeah, well the union, I, I don't know who is still union. Uh, the, not a lot. I'll tell you my, my, the radio business, you used to go to major stations in a major market and they were union. And now they're not anymore. No. And no. and and that's terrible. In fact, I t love to tell the story that here in New York, I, I did a couple of relief shifts at WOR when I was finally out of work at Sirius. And um, I had done relief work at OR while I was at Sirius years earlier. And, you know, they'd always call me up and say, where do we send the check and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And I got like uh, $300 a shift and that was wonderful. Uh, uh, under the fact that they stopped having a union at WOR, they didn't even call me up. I've never seen a check for the two shifts I did. Really? Yeah. And people say, well, why don't you just call them and tell them to send you the check? And I said, it's a better story this way because all they're going to send me is 50 bucks for each shift. You know? 50 bucks? Yeah. 
That's what's wow. happened to my business. You think your business is in trouble, but try mine. 50 bucks? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are people that's serious doing full-time shows at $35,000 a year. You know, it's... For the exposure. To begin with, unless you're a major success, talent isn't remunerated anymore. You know, before talent used to be considered, okay, well, we got to pay talent. We don't want them going on the air bitter, you know, uh, but they don't give a shit anymore. No, and I've heard of a situation where they'll give you a funny name like Tommy the Squid Boy, and then you can't leave with the name. You have to leave the name when you leave the station. Uh, so nobody I've, knows who you are. Yeah, I've heard of that happening. That yeah. I would never let that happen to me. I'm not going to be Tommy the Squid Boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know. Yeah, there were so many dusty roads, you know. <laughs> so many dusty roads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dusty roads. Uh, oh, uh, the guy who went on overnight was always... Bill Knight or Sam uh, Knight or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They always used Knight as the name. And then there was the guy in San Francisco who was on Late Night. And he was weird. He was like a beatnik. Yeah. And I can't remember his name. You know I mean? Al Jasbo Collins. No. No? But I, was I, it Jasbo? Was it Jasbo? It might have been. Yeah. But he was also on in Milwaukee for some reason. So I heard him in Milwaukee, so I knew him. I think you're right. I think it was Jasbo. Al Jasbo Collins, yeah. 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 So, I, but, uh, uh, oh, you know, there have been a lot of weird names in, in the times. I mean, I've worked with at several stations where people had the same name as somebody at the last station I was at. Uh, I remember years ago, you remember Les Crane? Yeah, yeah. The talk show host, right? TV. Yeah, yeah. Well, his, his I can't remember his real name now, uh, but he used to use the name of Birds. Because in San Francisco, he was on the air as Johnny Raven. Uh, <laughs> Les Crane. Yeah. Johnny Raven. Yeah. 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 Bobby Hummingbird. Bill Stork. I don't know, you know. I mean, uh, so, um, you know. But I just, I use my father's name and my name. So, my right, first name is Bennett. My father's first name was Alex. Da, 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 da. It's just simple, right? And nobody else in the business has the name. And nobody else can have it because I am part of the union. And Robert, in yeah. the union, nobody else can use the name Alex Bennett. Yeah, Billy J. Remember Billy J., the comedian in San Francisco? Yeah. His real name was Bill Murray. Oh, really? Yeah. And he can't use that. He couldn't use that in after. So he went. And also Bill Murray in comedy, you know, would have been a little confusing. Yeah, you wouldn't have been able to get away with that. Could he have called himself Billy Murray? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Would, is that enough to get away I from Bill that, Murray? I think that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but still, I mean, in the eyes of the public, you know, I mean, you want a separate identification. You don't want, you don't want any yeah. any verge, any morphing. Well, nobody wants to steal my name anyway because... Uh, Bennett Schwartzman? No, <laughs> Alex Bennett. Oh. <laughs> because the one that exists hasn't been that successful. So uh, who, who wants the you, name, you know? Do you think that if you were starting out today, you'd be Bennett Schwartzman? I don't think so, no. No, it's still, I don't care whether you got Schwartz and Nager and things like that, and those names seem to have, have been, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, it, it still is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a difficult name to spell. Plus, nobody ever spells it right. They spell it with a T and yeah. one N, and it's actually no T and two Ns. It's Schwarzman. Oh, I, uh, it's S C H A R Z M A N N. No, no, see, no, see, I already you got it wrong. S C H W A R Z M A N N. By the way, identity thefts. That's my name. <laughs> if any of your identity gets stolen, uh, just be happy that they'll have no life too. Uh, that, thank you, Bubbles. <laughs> I, I, I love Bubbles' line on that. Lake Tahoe. 
Yeah. yeah, we went up together and uh, did a whole week together. It was fun. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Bubbles in about a half an hour. So He told me that you were thinking of possibly coming back to San Francisco and doing a do, doing a, a old-time revival show. We're talking about it. You know, we're talking about it. I got I to gotta get that thing going. I would love Great to do American it. Great American Music Hall, man. Huh? Yeah. Great American Music Hall. Yeah. Probably in the day when it didn't cost me anything. Now it would cost me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Really? You didn't have to pay no. rent? Uh-huh. Uh, you didn't we, have to pay rent? We, we shared the, the gate with uh, the Great American Music Hall. Oh. Uh, so it, it was the deal back in the day. Plus, we knew the guy that owned the place and everything like that. It was all a family kind of deal. But anyway, listen, uh, thanks for, by the way, exposing yourself to... Uh, yeah, say hello to uh, Bubbles See, I, I want to leave that in because that's hilarious that we were sitting here listening to you have to deal with Medicare Part D. Just take a number out here and there. I can't. You know, I wish I could. I would. But, well, well I, I, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. But, really? uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Nobody listens to this thing anyway, so. Really? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of work. I don't want to put you through a lot of work. Well, let me, let me I'll see what I can do. Anyway, okay. hey, it's always good to talk to you, Will Durst, uh, and uh, to talk about this thing, that thing, and to hear you fight with Medicare Part D. <laughs> now go get your car fixed. I uh, will. Thank you, Alex Bennett. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Durst. This is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let me turn up the microphone and then let me also get me over here. There we go. And uh, here, here we are. A uh, few problems tonight. Uh, uh, I could explain it, but uh, let me explain it once I get some people on here. I'm opening up the Skype lines so that we can do the little Skype deal. Uh, and... Uh, if you want to start calling us, uh, we're here, folks. We're here, we're here, we're here. Uh, so you can give us a call, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, talk with you, okay? Uh, here comes Mike. God. Boy, Mike. Uh, hello, Mike. Hello. Yeah. Oh, oh there. I You've got sound problems, Mike, so... Don't call tonight, okay? Because you seem to have had problems tonight with... Uh... Okay, how's that right now? Well, now it's better. But now we don't have a picture on you. Hold on. Look, I got enough technical problems tonight. I don't need to deal with yours. Okay. All right. All right. There you are. Okay. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. Uh, Asia about uh, the street in San Francisco sold for $90,000. Yeah, I know. We know that story. Uh, to me, that's kind of crazy. Well, we'll tell the story fully later. You're not telling it right. Right. A a anyway, hello uh, to uh, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Is Jeff there? There he is. Okay. Yeah, yeah Jeff. There he is. There he goes. And, um, there we go. Yeah, I had a few problems tonight, but you wouldn't know, Mike, because you don't listen. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. I did listen. You know, I, I warned Damien about you. He said, I wonder why he he's, keeps trying to call us and keeps trying to call us. And I said, because he doesn't listen to the show. He just calls. You well. Know. <laughs> it, what, what happened to him now? Nothing. Oh, okay. Nothing. Anyway. Where were we? I admit I did not listen. Well, that's okay, Jeff. <laughs> I, I excuse you. Because I know you care. Uh, here comes Scott. Here comes Scott Boddicker. We have uh, Patrick is there. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, there's there's Scott. Okay. Uh, boy, we got a lot of a lot of people here tonight already. Well, of course, because we're starting so late. Yeah. Uh, keeping me up. Yeah. Let me see here. Here comes uh, here comes Phil Meyer. Uh, he's added to the pack. Uh, as soon as he turns his camera on, we'll be able to see his lovely face. Here comes Rob Alfano. Man, everybody's jumping in early tonight. Okay. Gee, maybe I shouldn't start this show till 1030 every night. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, let me get everybody all at once. Anyway, I had a, I, in case, oh boy, here comes, wait a minute. I, 
Phil's having problems coming in. Phil, are you there? Are you there, Phil? No, he's not there. Okay, well, I'll remove him from the group, and then we'll kind of let him call back. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, here's here's the problem that I had tonight, and and I and I didn't want to start the show till I could start it clean. Uh, there was no sound coming out of here, and what happens is I have to set up the program that does the TV with certain things like you know tell it what where it goes to hear the sound and so on and so forth and those things remain solid except tonight I came back in here and the machine the PC had restarted itself why well I would imagine one of the reasons why is that Microsoft decided they wanted to update it and of course they don't ask you first and when they updated it it completely got rid of my setting for where the sound, the audio, was supposed to come from, which is my line out. You know what I'm talking about, right, Rob? You know, Scott, what I'm talking about. I notice a, a, a sign of acknowledgement there. And it had completely changed all those things, and I never went back to them to see that they were, you know, where they were. It was the last thing I expected uh, as a problem. And so I had a problem getting sound out of here. There was no sound going out at all until finally I just turned everything off and I rebooted this machine and then finally I said, if I go into the settings and I tell it, maybe the line in change. And sure enough, my, those fuckers at Microsoft, when they rebooted my machine, put it back to whatever the default is, which is nothing. And, you know, when you're trying to figure out why you're not getting sound, there's a process of elimination. But there are a lot of things to eliminate, and there were other things I was going to eliminate first before I got to that, and I went, aha, that's probably where it is, when I finally saw it. We were on. So then I finally went on the air about, oh, I don't know, 25 after the hour with what I considered a clean version. I had, I had to start it again for the video. Then I had to stop the video to start, because I had forgotten to start the, uh, the audio on the network, so I wanted to get a good clean everything, so I finally get, got everything started at the same time. It, 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 it's enough to make you want to go crazy, you know, and give up. Uh, what do we say about that? It's a PC. Fuck it. You know, what are you, you're nodding your head, Rob. Chalk it up. Huh? That's the way it is. Just chalk it up. That's all. It's, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, you know, I mean, what happens with a company like uh, you have a, a, a like yesterday? I did something that I was afraid was going to go wrong tonight, but it didn't. And that was it. I had to, they said you have to up, we want, have to upgrade your uh, your Skype, and I'm always afraid to do that because whenever you upgrade Skype, something is, goes wrong. And in this case, it was fine tonight. It's fine tonight, so it's not a problem. But. Uh, but this whole thing where I came in and the machine had completely rebooted itself meant that they had gone ahead and just done it. Are you there, Phil? Phil? Are you there? Phil's not there. Huh. I'll get rid of him. Uh, I don't know why he's not there. Uh, he usually never has any problems getting in. Uh, maybe I could call him. Let's see here. Can I call him? Yeah. Let me, let me add him to the group and see if he if he hears me ringing him. Um, but anyway, he he's having troubles tonight. Okay. So, well, I'll just take him off until it's time to, you know. So that's what happened to your uh, deal that you're doing on Facebook because you had no sound whatsoever. Yeah. I just told you that was what was wrong. Mm. You know, and uh, you know, and and so I've gone back. I, I I've tried to make it so that Microsoft won't do this sort of thing. Now I've just told it only upgrade between the hours of four o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah. You know, and so if I come in in the morning and it's rebooted, well, I guess that's you know that's the problem. Okay, here comes Phil. Phil, are you there? No, he's not there. Mm -hmm. What is Phil's problem tonight? Phil never has problems. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else got in really nicely, so it can't Maybe be. Maybe he got nuked. 
Maybe he should upgrade to the new uh, well, that's, Sky. Uh, we're on our way there. What do you mean? What do you mean you're on your way there? To getting nuked. It'll be a matter oh, of time. Oh, oh yeah, we haven't. We, oh. Well, that was going to be the big discussion tonight. Uh, the fact that our 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 commander in chief is not acting like he should be in this Korea situation. Uh, and when I turned on the TV today, everybody was blasting him, saying, "This isn't. You don't make a threat you can't keep." Okay. He does that every day, though. Yeah, uh, Patrick. No. No different than when you pull your weapon on somebody. If you're a peace officer, you pull it, or even a, a civilian, you pull it, and you must be ready to use it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And the thing is, what I saw with him, what I don't remember if it was a tweet or if it was uh, him talking about that. You know, there's going to be hellfire, blah, 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 the likes of which the world has never seen. Oh, it was live. It was live okay, video of him I, saying that. And I heard it on a segment, and I thought, you can't make veiled threats like that. And the thing is, now with his, you know, and I said this last week about good things mm -hmm. with Mattis and um, uh, Kelly being on his staff, well, I wonder if they've taken him in the room and spanked him and told him that's not how you run a military. Yeah. You can't talk shit and yeah. not back it up. By and the way, the is, yeah, but, yeah. Well, before we go further, I just got a note from Phil, and he says he's in Salt Lake City, and he's not. Uh, he's having a hard time signing in. So for me to try to call him. So let's see what happens if he picks up. Uh, 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 where were we? Oh, yeah. So, you know, the question is, are, are, are they willing to actually... There you are, Phil. Finally. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I was unable to uh, get through on this uh, on this uh, machine for some reason. So, Well, you got through because I called you. I know. I asked you to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we'll come to regret it, but welcome. Good evening. <laughs> Hey, it's with great fire and fury. That, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But anyway, we, we're, we're talking about this, and it, 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 you don't make that kind of threat. I mean, if Putin made that kind of threat, you'd, <coughs> the whole world would be in, 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 uh, just absolutely going ap uh, apoplectic. Yes, Rob? Well, I don't know if anybody will remember this, but I said this on here yeah. before he became president. Or I think between uh, the election day and inauguration day, I said we are going to we are going to regret this because it's going to cause a major catastrophe in the world, and this is it. Yeah. this is yeah. it. Well, did uh, did gonna wind uh, up in a nuclear in, in some sort of limited, hopefully nuclear combat? Well, we can forget about Guam. Yeah. He said that the Kim said, he, oh, we're going to fire a rocket, uh, something at Guam. Yeah. So he's, you know, so he's making uh, his th little threat. Why did he pick oh. Guam? Oh, yeah, be uh, because America has, uh, yeah. huh? Has yeah, bases yeah. there. Has bases yeah. And there. it's it's a, uh, it's a, um, what, what do they call it? It's, it's like a protectorate yeah. of uh, the U.S. But remember that Kim Jong-il in, uh, or Un, excuse me. I have mm. un mixed up with ill. Uh, uh, was making made that threat after Trump made his threat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So now it's our turn to either react, yeah. or to to go back on it, which really looks bad. Well, he did. He did, Rob. He sent uh, airplanes from Guam, uh, some B fifty somethings. Uh, I don't remember exactly what type of plane. But these are planes that could strategically hit them, and he sent them from Guam up to yeah, you uh, know towards something? North Korea. This son of a bitch is going to thrust us into a nuclear holocaust. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Japan is already ramping up. You know, ramping they, they up what? Threatened. Ramping up what? Uh, well, normally they're always in a defensive status, but now they're ramping up to get in an offensive status. Yes, but they haven't said 
you try to send up more rockets or something, and you know, it, not the kind of threat that Trump made today. That was a stupid, a gunslinging uh, thing to say in a world where you know diplomacy has to be your last resort before that sort of thing. Well, they've tried diplomacy for no, years. No, they haven't. They haven't tried. Yeah, so let's yeah. just, what do you got to lose? What do you got to lose? Yeah. Guam. Yeah. Brian, yeah, you know, are you there, Brian. by the way? Who? Brian. Brian. Oh, I see his little thing, but it doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. Apparently, he's not on. I don't so. think he'd like you to call it a little thing. No, I, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Yes, Patrick. Um, that concerns me with North Korea at this point is when Dad was alive, Kim Jong Il. He seemed to saber rattle, but that's it. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling this fucking knob would actually push the button um, because he already assassinated several family members, um, and he just wanted doing things, whereas his dad and his grandfather, as kooky as they were, they there was a level that I think they respected China. And they respected China's authority. And Kim Jong-un doesn't give a shit about any of that. And the problem is we've got a president that's of the same mindset of a 12-year-old that you fart in my face, I'm going to fart in your face. Next thing I'm going to squirt shit in your face, well, then I'll squirt shit in your face. And that's, what's yep. gonna, that's what it seems like happening. Yeah. And... You know, we went through, we went through Bush, we went through Clinton, we went through Bush, we went through Obama, and we had a lot of threats with North Korea on all of them, and with Russia, and it was all resolved, because you had a president who was diplomatic, regardless of which one it was, and then you also had, like I said, Grandpa and Dad that feared China. I think that that would have kept them in line. Yeah. Yes, then, but this is the this Patrick. This is the first time that they've actually had nuclear capability and the ability to to reach the U.S. mainland. Uh, under sure. the other the other two uh, leaders, uh, they didn't have that uh, capability. It wasn't until 2006 that they began uh, the nuclear program, and uh, and now uh, their nuclear program is uh, is only maybe a year or so away from being able to actually miniaturize a, a nuclear, that warhead. A nuclear, a, a, wait a minute, a, nu a nuclear program. I don't know what that is. I know what a nuclear well, program is, well, but I don't know what a nuclear... Well, you go to the George W. Bush School of Nuclear? Yeah, you know? Patrick, <laughs> Patrick, Patrick, <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> nuclear sounds like pimple cream. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. First, yeah. well, wait a minute. Hold on, you're, you're breaking. You're crackling a little bit. I think maybe you're. You're. Are you, do you do? Are you? What are you using for a microphone? This. Oh, oh, that's you. No, I'm talking about Patrick. Oh. Crackling. No, I guess you're not. Maybe. Maybe it was. Uh, maybe it, it was somebody here. Uh, wait a minute. Well, first of all, Patrick, then Brian, then Mike. Okay. The, the thing is, Bill. Even if that. Even if previous regimes of dad and grandpa would have had nuclear wait, 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 uh, hold, hold, on, hold, hold on a second where's that crackling coming from Mike is that you no uh, boy it could just be in Skype no it's not in Skype oh wait a minute I know what it is it's Jeff Jeff I, mm -hmm. see, I see it's you yeah yep. yeah yep. yeah yeah it's Jeff yeah uh, is it up against something your microphone it's just here. The pacemaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got to keep it going. Though. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Would you turn <laughs> off your pacemaker, please, so we don't get that horrible sound? <laughs> I get a new one. Uh, no, it's fine. As long, I think it was just rubbing against your, but it was. It could have been. Okay, now Patrick, oh, okay. then Brian, then Mike. Yes. So, even if. The other regimes would have had the capability, Phil. 
I still think that dad and grandpa had enough respect for China and its authority that it would just be saber rattling. It'd be no different than Russia had nukes. I mean, and they still have nukes. And, and yes, they're a threat, but they're, they're smart enough to know that if they push the button, it's going to be a reaction. And I don't think this kid get, gets it through his head. And when I say kid, I could be referring to either Trump or Kim Jong-un. Well, if uh, if we would shoot well, down one I of those said, test I said, missiles. I said Brian was next. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Brian. Your mic was Muted, Brian. You're muted, Brian. And no picture of him. Brian? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh, this is just a night of technical wonders. Well, while you're trying to fix that, Mike? <clears throat> like you were saying, Patrick, it's true. Yes, yeah, but uh, North Korea has more respect for China. Because China, you know, could just say, hey, screw you, asshole, and we're going to come down and straighten your ass out. Then on top of that, he's also making a threat towards the U.N., because of that billion dollar, uh, you know, uh, sanction, you know, the thing on them. You think that's going to stop him? Hell no. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. <clears throat> and who's going to stop him? Uh, yes, you know? Rob. J Donald Trump. Donald Trump has the might and uh, incredible power of of, 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 of the. the uh, uh, I'm hearing myself come phone. back. back. Oh, who's this <laughs> doing? Now, is that you, Brian, with the sound coming on? Yes, it is. There he goes. He's muted now. Okay. But, I mean, Trump has the entire U.S. Army and the power of all that. And when you've got that kind of power, you need to be respectful of it. And you're not, you, you can't walk around and flaunt. You've got to be the one that, that – you've got to lay back. You've got to let these little tiny guys make their threats. And if you take them too seriously and you – attack back what do you think you're going to get you're going to get escalation that's why all the other presidents have just let him speak and let him speak and now you're now you now you've now he may just go ahead and attack guam then we've got to go and respond and well protect. the reality of that is we're keeping our eye out for anything that takes off from north korean soil and we have our rockets ready to intercept them so uh, and then if we miss uh, chances are we won't. Not with today's technology. Today we can pretty well. I mean, that that's the trouble with, uh, uh, with 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 one country having nuclear missiles and another one having nuclear missiles. Basically, they're going to explode in midair because they're going to hit each other. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not worried about the safety of America, of the United States of America. I think we can intercept those things, uh, but I think. Do all the other countries have those uh, the same uh, ability to be able to blow them up? Uh, uh, I think Russia does. I'm sure. I don't know if China does, but I think so. Um, we talk about countries Did, in that area, you know. And we give it to South Korea as well. Uh, yeah, I think we gave some to South Korea. Yeah, that if 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 they try to do anything, we could intercept it. Here's they can't. The, here's here's the question: it. We've got a president now who has shown himself to be itchy on the trigger finger that his statement literally said that okay and we don't know what he's going to do if kim jong un sends up a rocket is he going to meet that with another rocket or is he going to when he, when he sees it's going to be fired is he going to attack i think North he's Korea? met uh kim jong un on his, on the same level and i i believe that this will lead to negotiations uh, yeah. And, go, go, uh, yeah, and if they don't, don't. Well, that's well, just, you know, you know rich, rich, rich. who's now? Who's, is that you is again, that Brian, you? with the audio hey, with coming the, back yeah. at us? Yeah. No, I'm not. But I what? I, what? I, I think it's yeah, Brian. Think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with your system, Brian. But I, you know, I, the only reason I'm very short with you and short with anybody who's having technical problems tonight because of all the technical problems I went through getting the show on the air and I'd at least like it when we finally get on the air that I don't have to have these problems with you. Mm. Hey Scott, you've been quiet about this. What do you think? I mean, I I think 
uh, whoever whoever said it, I think, uh, put it correctly that these are two babies playing with each other. You know, you arguing with each other. I, I think I heard one guy say today, it's like two nuts with nukes. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you, go, you know, but. Well, I have a theory that a nuclear war wouldn't be a bad thing, so you don't want to hear that. No. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a That's your really? Is that, is that, is that, like that, that. that again is is that you, J Jeff? Are you moving something around? Not at all. I'm not. I don't know what that Where is. is that sound but, coming from? Somebody's that was me. Your crumpling I'm sorry. paper. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys are going to drive me crazy it, tonight. It, well, if you want to hear it, it, it I'll make. Yeah, it, yeah, I'll make, yeah. Give you the so, short version. Yeah. <laughs> Well, see, I was I was always concerned about uh, global warming, right, and how it's going to destroy the earth and kill all of, you know, you know, uh, extinction events and all that stuff. But I think now, if we have nuclear war, we won't ever ever die of uh, global warming. <laughs> so. and, and 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 another part of the theory is, you know, because the. The sun coming down to the earth is causing the global warming and, you know, the trapped gases and everything aren't letting it escape. If we have nuclear war and we throw all this debris and stuff into the atmosphere, the sun will never get down to the earth to cause the global warming. So you're, you're I think you're, you're talking about that nuclear holocaust creating a, another. Yeah, see, that's yeah. a nuclear winter versus a global warming. Yeah. So maybe they'll cancel each other out and we'll all survive. So I think it's a good thing Trump got elected. <laughs> it's cyclical. Every oh, seventy no. or so years, there's an atomic blast, and uh, and it you know it shakes up the uh, the population. I think it's just a cyclical. You know, thing. we were the first and second people, the only first and second people in the world to drop an a atomic device on a human population. We could, and we are in the process here because of Mister Big Fucking Mouth in a position where we may be the third as well. And we sit around yelling and screaming about Iran's got a bomb and Pakistan's got a bomb and, uh, and Russia's got a bomb and China's got a bomb. You know something? They haven't used it. We're the only ones that have. We're not going to be the first strike when it comes to this North Korea thing. I'm sure, you know, that how are, you so, how are you so sure, in. Phil, because that isn't the way he put it today. I'm uh, using his said. words. It I'm was saber-rattling. You don't saber-rattle. This is not a game. This he's is not... Beating, this is not this is, with the same thing. No, this is, this is not that kind of game. You don't play it this way. Yes, Gee. Patrick. Actually, yes, you can play it that way. And we did throughout... Cold War, and we did with North Korea in the past. The problem this time is Kim Jong Un is stupid enough to take the bait, and that's where the scary part comes in. Is Trump may think that he's meeting him at the same level. The problem is Kim Jong Un would very gladly just hit the button and launch a nuke. You know, and that's the scary thing with him. Is well, uh, he most most of the people today that I that I heard from on the news, like uh, McCain, for instance, uh, are saying this was a very dangerous thing for Trump to do. You 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 have this in your pocket. Everybody knows you have this in your pocket. Kim Jong Un knows you have this in your pocket. You don't pull it out, especially at this point, and use it. Okay, the, they. He knows that if he were to send up a, a nuclear missile, his country would probably be, you know, nuclear dust. By, by the, you know, and uh, so he, he, it didn't need to be said. It was bad diplomacy. It was bad saber rattling. You know, and it, it, it was a baby fighting a baby. That's really what it was all about. It was a schoolyard fight. And it's nothing you didn't expect from a guy with the temperament of Donald Trump or Kim Jong Un you know i mean if you heard if kim jong un had said exactly what trump had said today we would we would be going crazy now he came back with his answer to it about guam but prior to that he wasn't saying he was going to take out this place and take out that place and whatever that it took 
uh, Donald Trump to make the, to throw that into the into the card game. Well, now you know where to put up your anti missile uh, <laughs> missiles. Yeah, if he's going to point towards Guam, he's telegraphed where he's going to send the bomb. So what the fuck are you doing in Salt Lake City? No, uh, Carpet One Convention. Uh huh. And what are you eating? Is he Trump? Oh Cliff yeah, that's bar. that's good for the diet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My sugar was seventy earlier. That's I had to bring wrong. it up. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can't you just take? A, oh well, forget it. Uh, yes, Tony had his hand up. This is what you get when you when they vote in not me, of course. When they vote in a billionaire, I use that word very loosely, Alex, because we don't think he's worth that money. Playboy has a president with a crazy ego, yeah. and his and his sycophant fans they think like he's being macho. Yeah, I think it's all he's just his ego, like. Well, you know, if he plays it, he feels, I think, if he plays it like a movie, okay, that his base John is going to like that. What? John Wayne. Yeah. If he, if he has that kind of John Wayne macho way of handling it, that that's, that, that's what works. You know, and, 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 and this isn't. Is and do uh, you think he talked to his generals about that? No. He was at that. Uh, he was he was at an, an event today talking about something completely different, and the press asked him about it. So, stream of conscious, stream yeah, of conscious. He he's stupid, I think too. Uh, I, Do you I, think I, Kim yeah. Jong Un is a bully? I think Kim Jong Un is a nut. Forget he's about being a, a bully. Guy. He's just a nut. T- Tim, he's Kim Jong. He's a loose cannon. Well, Kim Jong Un is a immature child as well, yeah. And so is Donald Trump. That's the problem here. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sure the rest of the world is really shaken in their in their boots over this deal because they're worried about what's going to happen. You know, well, if I was in South Korea, yeah, I would yeah. be scared shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, so I mean, Trump, yes, yes, Patrick. I hope he hits Chicago first, because I figure the sooner I go, the less, the, the sooner everybody can be rid of me, and uh, they don't have to listen to my doubting on global warming just to follow up on what Scott was saying. Yeah, <laughs> they'll, they'll hit it because it's a sanctuary city. Yes, uh, Jack Bishop is <laughs> joining us. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Hello, Alex. Yes, turn on your camera. Jack. All right. You know, we're both having those Skype difficulties today, so that's why I called you uh, to get in on this conversation to see if Skype was working for me. Uh, You know, when is somebody going to say to these two jackasses, Mm -hmm. our jackass and Kim Jong-un, look, if you guys want to fight each other, meet in downtown Ho Chi Minh City, have it out. The rest of us don't want to be involved in your bullshit because these 18-year-old kids yeah. simply have two things on their mind, getting a beer and getting laid. I'd rather see McCain fight Trump on pay-per-view instead of Mayweather and the other guy. Really? Because Mayweather's going to kill the other guy, McGregor. He's going to kill him. But I'd rather see McCain against Trump. I'd pay 100 bucks for that. McCain would kick his ass, even with the brain tumor. Because Trump's a pussy. We know it. Did anybody see Game of Thrones this past weekend? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when uh, uh, the blonde chick yeah. went to war, she got in her own goddamn dragon and said, I'm out front. I'm leading my army from the front. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, these assholes that run things think that they can escape, that they can be far enough underground. And we should really go back to an exchange of families like we used to do in the Middle Ages, mm-hmm. where your family is at risk and my family is at risk. Or better yet, you walk around with a collar a you know, with a bomb attached to your head, so if anybody pushes a button, mm-hmm. you all die. That's my take. Okay. Doesn't uh, North Korea, they're working on a hydrogen bomb? 
Yeah, they're going to buy a Toyota Mirai. Oh, stop. He's, <laughs> He's jealous of how they can make good cars. Well, to begin with, well, the, hy the hydrogen bomb isn't something that we've even, even used as a notion for years now. Uh, we, we, I, we thought, think, I, thought, I thought North Korea, I'm sorry. We think, in, uh, Alex, we think more in terms of low-yield nuclear devices, but many of them. I was just reading just something. Your package. Hmm? That it would take uh, 20 minutes for an IC, ICBM to travel to Hawaii from North Korea. Mm -hmm. You know? That's Can you imagine cool. if you just get tourists to, to travel that quickly? Uh, and it says the public would have uh, 8 to 12 minutes notice before an attack started in, in Hawaii. You really think he's going to do it, though? I think he's just all excited. I got it. Which, who's going to do it? I don't which, think John Which one? Anything. Which nut? I would say Kim Jong-un. Well, why do we assume that he's a nut? I mean, this is a regime that has a history that has a history of getting what it wants. It's been in in power for over 70 years. It's outlasted every other authoritarian government on the planet. These aren't fools, and these guys aren't crazy. Well, I think you're wrong about what you just said, but first I want to go to Brian. Yes, Brian. We can't hear you, Brian. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Brian, we can't hear you. We just can't hear you. This is getting... I love it when you have problems. I know you love it when I have problems, but I don't like it when I have problems. And believe me, if if, if you had the problems I had, you'd never get on the air. <laughs> well, if I had the problems that you had, I'd be in bed with Mama making noises. Yeah, well, you know. Oh. Hey, by the way... Uh, and this time... isn't my problem, by the way. This is Brian's problem. By the way, what time do you want me to go on if I go on tonight? At the same time. Midnight. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you're going to do a short show. Basically, I'm doing a short show. Yeah. yeah. About 20... Wait, okay. now, now, now Brian's got our sound coming through. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> This really brings the show to a grinding halt, Brian. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I, I watch him. You know, the best the well, best answer is to hang up and call the automated call and see if you can get it worked out. The the Skype automated call. What? Uh, yeah. 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 I tried that earlier, and uh, I still wasn't able to get through to Alex. But, I, I don't uh, know why you weren't able to get through to me, because I called you, and it got right through. Yeah. So there's some... Well, maybe I'm pr maybe the buttons are different there's, on this, and it, I'm... There's some configuration with the Skype that you're using that perhaps isn't allowing you to, to send it. That's a possibility. Uh, we just lost Brian, because uh, he's... Yeah. I guess he's either going to try again or whatever. <laughs> You know, if things don't go well, and uh, we may never see Brian again, or any uh, of ours. Uh, uh, any of us. Yeah. And, and Jack, are you there still? We lost Jack too. No, yeah, I think he. I think he just left uh, uh, as a matter of course. Well, wait he usually minute. says goodbye though. Mm. Mm. Let me yeah, let me call him back and see what happened there, uh, and see if we can. Uh, he's he's. He's gone. In fact, he's offline. So I don't know. Oh, here comes here comes Brian. Brian, are you there? Can you hear us? Can you talk to us? I can. Uh, now, can you hear me? There we go. Yes. Using my phone now. So. Hmm. It's working. Yeah, but now we don't have a picture on you. So. There, go, there we are. No. Okay. Man, I'd have no idea what happened to Jack. You know. Oh, he just got cut off, too? Huh? Yeah. No, I think he hung up. I think he's mad at me. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, this is my first trip to Utah, and uh, uh, I had never seen so many white people and LDS. <laughs> LDS is everywhere here. And, uh, you know. Yes, uh, it's Salt Lake City. It's where the Mormons yeah. live, Bill. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Kel Supreme. For crying out loud! Well, 
Uh, this is my first trip here. I've never been here before. Well, I wanted to say something that Phil touched on, even though he was uh, he may have been half facetious about it. But and they, by the way, Jack, are, are you mad at wait a minute, Jack? Are you mad at me because I I I, I yelled at you because you tried to say I'm so happy that you're having problems. You know. Is he on? I didn't know. I, I he isn't even on the line. Oh, I thought he was on the line. Yeah. They'll tell him about the technology. No, if I try to so call Brian. Yeah. yeah, I was just gonna say, uh when you said earlier about how uh it would be nice if uh people from uh uh Hawaii or people from uh South Korea could travel to Hawaii in the amount of time it would take North Korea's ICBM to reach Honolulu. Uh, yeah. It just goes to show you how much, in my opinion, it would go to show you how much uh, more we could accomplish if our defense budget were reallocated into, you know, infrastructure and uh, and transportation and that kind of thing. We could have airplanes that could take us from Pittsburgh to California and, like, the amount of time it would take to watch one episode of uh, um, Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'd like to see the Hyperloop, uh, you know, be installed between a, a number of different places. I wonder if they could put the Hyperloop underwater, you know, so that. Uh, why why'd you bring up the Hyperloop? Oh, it's the what, thing that. What does uh, that have to do with this discussion? Well, we were just talking about the. Uh, ICBM, yeah. We have, okay. we have Jack back. What happened to you, Jack? I love it when you have problems. <laughs> Jordan, Florida. Oh, or don't, you, you know, uh, because this is Texas, I almost reached for my uh, Pearl Handle 38 and put a bullet through the screen. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do an Elvis Presley shoot your monitor instead. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just, I just, all I'm saying is, I mean, let's get back to the major thing that happened today, and that was his stupid statement that was just not, you just don't do that at this point. You, you know, you save that for the later down the line. But, you you know, uh, he's got the whole world frightened now that he's got the nuclear codes and that he's a loose cannon. That's what he said to the rest of the world. Yes. Somebody needs to disarm him. Something. Good luck with that. Yeah. Y y yes, uh, uh, Jeff. No, go to Jeff. He had his hand up first. Oh, Jeff. Jeff, you got to turn on your mic. Christ Almighty, everybody's having problems. All right, this I'm is on. like this is like a technical nightmare tonight. I know. Yeah. I, um, I want everybody to remember that a couple of what. Last week, we got a new general working for Trump to kind of control him. Yes, it's not working, is it? Yeah. No. Nope. There's no control. So we may as well fire no, In him. fact, today I did an interview earlier in the day with Will Durst, and Will mentioned that uh, the um, uh, uh, the, this new guy, uh, maybe can keep him under control. But that was before he made this statement this afternoon. Scott! You know, it's like, it, it, I guess the guy didn't follow him onto the golf course or something. I don't know. Uh, yes, first Jack and then Patrick. Well, they may not have the drugs that he needs when he goes to Murray Lago, but the real test he of this Jersey, whole... That's okay. Well, no, no, no. When he goes to Florida, they got the right drugs for him. Oh, okay. You're right. You know, the right drugs or the right horse or, you know, the right PP, whatever he's into. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the real test of what happened today will be tomorrow when the stock exchanges open. Uh. And, it, and it starts going downhill pretty damn quick. So, so, so. It, it went down today, Jack. It was really high, and then Trump opened his mouth, and it dropped like a rock already today. That, you fuck up the yeah, only thing. And, and you know what the Trump secret Trump. is to Trump's uh, whole mission in life? That's when he bought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He sold when it was high. Yeah. He bought it when it was low. You know. Well, he sold when it was high, and now he's going to buy it back. Yeah. So I was just joking. 
Yeah. It was just a joke, people. Remember that when he was talking about having the cops beat up prisoners or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, arrestees? I don't know what you call them, you know. But, yeah, it's just a joke. It's He's a, a joke. It's a joke. He's a big fucking joke. <laughs> Uh, that saying goes, it's only a joke when all parties laugh. Yes. Yeah. Once again, Brian is the guy that cut right to the point. I'll tell you what's interesting tonight is that Phil, who normally excuses Trump's behavior, hasn't really gone into into defending mode. Yeah. Um, I think that he's using his strategy, uh, mm -hmm. and he it's the same strategy he's uh, used... Uh, against uh, other opponents, uh, yeah. whether it's worked or not, is, uh, what other is still opponents? up for grabs. What, what other <laughs> opponents? Well, uh, whether it be Hillary or uh, any uh, the people that he campaigned against, as as well as uh, people that these were aren't, not. These aren't political enemies of his. These aren't people he's trying to get the job that they're trying to get. This is a guy who has a country has nukes uh, and and is capable perhaps soon of using them the, you know well that's that's a possibility but uh, uh, you know I All think right. China will have to will keep this guy in check uh, apparently know, they have escalating a, apparently uh, they haven't been able to there's been uh, uh, the UN resolution that they had uh, that condemned uh, North Korea was unanimous. This is one of the you know few times, other than uh, you know when they condemn Israel uh, for for being there, uh, that it's been you know unanimous. And, so, uh, so what good is that to do, Phil? Well, it means that you have the uh, the world is standing uh, uh, strong against uh, so Kim Jong Un. Are we going to have a world war because of two horses' asses? I don't think it's just two horses' asses. You're looking. Uh, you're being very short-sighted. Well, yeah, because, you know, glowing in the dark is not a really good option. <laughs> no, but if we don't stop Kim Jong-un uh, before he uh, finalizes his program, that's why uh, he's going to be a, he's going to be a bigger threat. And that's why I said those two sons of bitches need to meet in Ho Chi Minh City and duke it out rather than getting a bunch of kids involved in this bullshit. Uh, I'll put them on an island somewhere. A wet dream to have that, but it's not going to happen. So I we, guess the nobody of nobody of any world significance has suggested that. Nobody's been bold enough to suggest that. Show up at the goddamn Peter meters and have a measure. <laughs> ah, he's got the small hands. <laughs> they're not going to, and there are enough apologists and rabbit frothing at the mouth of people willing to fight and die for something they believe to be the right thing to, uh, you know, prevent what you're guessing, Jack, from ever happening. I don't think that enough people in powerful positions have given the folks that don't have power the idea that they have the option. And the people who don't have the power are stupid enough to think that they don't have the option to begin exactly. with. Exactly. You know, there was a saying yeah. in the 60s, that I know Alex remembers this, what would happen if they threw a war and nobody showed up? Patrick. <laughs> um, I think the most significant thing out of what Phil was saying with the UN is that China went along with the resolution and the sanctions. So, I mean, that's a big step right there. Because they're the daddy in the area. And, you know, if... if if little Kim decides to pull some shit... Wait a minute, when you say they, little Kim, is that, the, is that the rapper, or is that the... Or are you talking about Kim Jong-un? They both suck. So what <laughs> yeah, uh, they both have equal amount of integrity, as far as I'm concerned. So, I mean, you know, the, Daddy might come out and spank the kid if he pulls some shit. But, I mean, so I look at China being part of that unanimous decision as a good thing because they haven't in the past over the past many times that it's been brought up and this time they did so that's got to mean something well, i think everybody sees the urgency and the fact that they're really moving this their nuclear program ahead so you know they sat they sat they sat now it's time to act 
let me ask you all a question now, and and this is a, a question I was talking to a girlfriend about today, and I brought this up before, but I think it's something in this case we have to seriously think about. Who are we to tell anybody that they can't have a nuclear weapon? That's true. You know, I mean, uh, why don't we become the object lesson to all these other countries and say we're we're disarming our nukes, we're not going to have nukes. But when you're sitting there and telling Kim Jong-un that he can't have a nuke, but you've got one, what you're essentially asking him to do is the equivalent of asking us to disarm. Well, why can't we be an object lesson? Yes, Mike. <clears throat> it's like you said, true. But if one kid says, come on, put up your dukes, we're going to have a fist fight. It's like two kids. You got two fat boys. You're going to duke it out. I have no idea what you're saying. All I'm all, 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 all I'm saying is that you know we you know how dare we tell Iran they can't have a bomb? How dare we tell North Korea that they can't have a nuclear device? Oh, they're irresponsible. Well, wait a minute. We blew off two of them. We're irresponsible too. Under democratic rule. Oh, oh that's bullshit, Phil. We blew up. We killed. Tens of thousands of people with a, a nuclear who, device. It was Truman, the, you know. Uh, Look, I don't care who it was. I'm saying that we as a country use the nuclear device, and we're the only ones who have. Yes, Rob? Well, I think up until recently, we've been the leaders in the world. We have spent a lot of money, and we have a lot of... Uh, we have a lot at stake out there. So maybe if anybody can do it, we can do it. There's, there's you know... People complain that we are we we're generous and we give money to these countries and we if anybody is could say it, it would be us until now because now we're you know we're becoming uh, you know America first and we don't give a shit about anybody else and but up until then I think we're probably the only ones who could say that yeah we keep world order they look to us yeah well my question is how can we however since we have a nuclear arsenal that you know will would you know probably annihilate the world 20 times over tell somebody who's trying to get a little pea shooter going that they can't do it when they no when they say this is the way we're protecting our country this is the way we're we're putting them putting ourselves into the dialogue of the rest of the world yes jack has his hand up and then you know, jeff and then jeff you know you know being uh, a guy that uh, minored in history in college one of the things that always struck me when I found this out was uh, Eisenhower was not for using nukes on Japan. There was uh, the Joint Chiefs weren't sure if they were for it. Uh, I found it very, very interesting the more I thought about it that we did not use nukes in the European theater. The idea that uh, we would have had this uh, we, long well, well, you're, 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 I have to correct you on a couple of things. Number one, the reason we didn't use them in the European theater is that war was over before we had it completely developed and, well, and ready to go. Well, I just that out of something to think about. Yeah, no. And, and the, uh, the other thing that you were saying was that, uh, uh, what was it, the uh, thing before that? Uh, oh, oh uh, where you were talking about history and that, uh, oh, what were you saying about history, that history... Somebody. Well, I said I, I said that uh, Eisenhower. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, oh, the 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 powers that be. The truth about the atomic bomb being unleashed on Hiroshima and Nagasaki is that the Japanese were within days of giving up anyway, and we knew that, but we did it anyway, and yeah. we didn't do it. We didn't do it to stop the war in Japan. We did it as a warning to Russia. Yes. Yeah, I left that out. You're y right. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Well, I think everybody remembers <clears throat> about uh, our agreements and, and lack of agreements with Russia over the years and, and what we did in Cuba. But what we probably forgot was the French started building nuclear equipment themselves. And we were very much against that. They were building and, it in Iran. And the Israelis and, were against it. They blew it up. 
same kind of things. And um, and we really, although we were very much against all of those things, we were never really able to to stop anybody from from at least developing uh, their well, own Well, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of, of where we're really wrong in a way. Uh, we tell Iran that they can't build a bomb. And, you know, I, I don't think any of these countries, are, including us, should build these bombs. We, we should not consider that part of our arsenal, okay? But we do anyway. Uh, but the thing with Iran is they're building a bomb for self-protection because... There's a nuclear device pointing at them from Israel. Israel has a nuclear device. It's a known fact, but it's never spoken of. And, and because they are capable of lobbing that missile into, into Iran, Iran feels the need to protect themselves. They have so, supposedly given that up by saying they weren't going to continue with their nuclear enrichment program. But the fact of the matter is, who are we to tell them they can't protect themselves? They are they are uh, one of the major supporters of uh, I don't give a shit, Phil. World. I don't give a shit, Phil. Who are we with our nuclear devices to tell somebody who's got nuclear device pointed at them that they can't build a nuclear device? They're not sane. It's like having Kim Jong Un in your backyard. And uh, yeah. allowing him to uh, build these nuclear devices. Jeff, did you have did, did you have your hand up, Jeff? Well, I was going to say uh, that just as much as what you want to say about North Korea and and uh, and Iran. the other countries, just remember we're run by Trump now. He's the guy who has the the nuclear button today. Yeah, just as dangerous as the others. Yes, that's right. Jack has his hand up. And if we're so sane, how come we haven't got Medicare for all? How come we haven't got free college education for all? How come uh, uh, we haven't got the kind of programs Jack, that... Jack, 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 don't get Phil started, please. <laughs> Well, no, I got one. Well, Phil, you call in, and I'll ask you that question again. You call my show. We'll get down to that because you know I'll fight with you anytime, anywhere. Yeah, thanks. It's an hour later here, and I'm, I'm not going to uh, be able to. Sleep. i got to be up at 6. Hey, that carpet is going to lay there on the floor no matter what time you get there. Well, I've got to do a presentation tomorrow. Anybody we know? No, he's, uh, in, he's in Salt Lake City. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm at a convention. Then you're really where things aren't seen. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. It was uh, LDS everywhere. And, uh, uh, you know, if you thought that there weren't a, a lot of black people uh, in uh, Tennessee or wherever you were working, uh, that uh, you felt there was a lot of discrimination, you should come to Salt Lake City. There is no diversity here. Even his uh, room is white. Look at it. You know, if, if I had, if I had, if, if they knew I was Jewish, they'd be looking for my horns. <laughs> well, you know, oddly, oddly enough, there are a number of people who are who are of color in the LDS church. And when they went to South America, they had to change some of their stated policies to be able to proselytize in uh, South America. So at least they're, they're they're a little bit more flexible than a lot of folks when it comes to getting folks to sign up and buy the Kool-Aid. Or the proverbial Kool-Aid. Yes. Yes. Um, gee, nobody has their hand up. Wow. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Go right ahead. You know, you see, you say, like, Trump's our president now leader of this country. What about the other figureheads out of the country, when we're leading their countries? How are they looking upon Trump now? He fired how many guys? We got to be looking at it as like a laughing stock. Like, he's in here six months and it's like revolving chairs for his cabinet. It's like, don't you think other countries are looking at that saying, look how unsettled he is? He can't even get anything straight. They're leaking stuff out of the White House constantly. They, they're leaking. One guy, who's, whatever he talks about, goes right out to the papers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to look like we're totally unsettled on the outside looking in. If I was in another country, why would you want to talk to Trump if you're, Phil, if you were a leader of a free country? Wouldn't you be afraid to talk to him on the phone? I'd be afraid whatever I said, if we get out the next day. Absolutely. I sent the money. <laughs> I mean, nothing is safe. Look at it that way. Well, 
they're they're looking to to get those leakers, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, Jeff Sessions uh, is. Uh, is, has uh, won over heart, uh, uh, Trump's heart again, going after the leakers. And those leakers are the ones that That's keep the rest of us informed about the evil that goes on in the halls of power. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, Brian. Uh, I just wanted to say, I you know how many times uh, Phil has invoked the name of the nation of Iran as well as uh, North Korea. Now, North Korea wouldn't fit my example that I'm or my point that I'm trying to illustrate here, but. Why is it that as far as Iran is concerned, and Iraq even, that, uh, you know, we have been fighting against and demonizing countries with headed by dictators and enemies that we ourselves created? Uh, we, uh, the CIA, was responsible for having overthrown a democratically elected government in Iran in, in the uh, 70s. Right. And uh, the uh, CIA is... Uh, responsible for having, as is Nixon, for having installed Augusto Pinochet in Chile, as well as, uh, um, you know, our involvement in... Uh, well, we are uh, known as the country other... the country who supports dictators. You know, worldwide, that's the perception of us. And we, we support... Oh, let's be fair. We support right-wing dictators. When there was a Soviet Union, they supported left-wing dictators. Kid's got a point, Alex. Yeah, yeah. No, he, yeah. No, listen, Brian is is very bright where this stuff is concerned. You know. And how come when we start talking about countries with atomic weapons, we never mention Pakistan, which is right there next to some of the people that we say are terrorists? You, and remember? India also. Yeah. You were, what? 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 I I didn't hear what Mike said. And what? India and India also has a bomb also. Yeah, so they can know, fire back and back and back, 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 back and forth. Does India have the bomb? Does India have the bomb now? India has a bomb. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They did that in retaliation to Pakistan. Pakistan does too. They hate each other. Yeah. You know, remember what uh, somebody said on your side of the aisle, Phil? One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. I think I said that. And the leak's going to keep on going. About thirty no, years ago, not. I said that. Did you really? Yes. I love what Mike said, and the leaks just keep on coming. Yeah. And they're not going to stop it. Yeah. And old Donald's going to turn, watch, watch his hair turn more grayer. Wow. Hey, look, I got to get ready to do a uh, program myself. Yeah. Uh, catch you here in a few minutes from Black Avenger World Headquarters. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, and I hope you have as as few technical problems as I've had tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and may all you know. my troubles be little ones. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Jack. I always appreciate you calling. Wonderful backhanded compliment, Mr. Bennett. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, talk to you later, Jack. Later. Bye-bye. Anyway, that's uh, Jack Bishop, and he is next with the intersection. I guess I can say that now, then I don't have to say it later. Uh... So uh, he, with Amy Manuel, uh, will be up next. So what does this all come to? What do you think tomorrow is going to bring? Do you think there's any chance that Trump is going to soften his, uh, his uh, stance? Uh, and tr uh, Yes, Scott. He'll forget he said it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to double down. Hey, uh, and more, yeah. yeah, and more leaks are coming. And and you, Pat, trick. I believe that um, Kelly will sit him down and remind him that what he said was stupid, and that's not top. That's not tolerable. I mean, if you draw your weapon, you better be ready to use it. You can't just threaten. You can't just threaten, and that. And I, coming from a detail, the way that he supposedly. Love to get rim jobs from the military. Yeah. He may listen to General Kelly. I think he probably will. And if and he, Matt, yeah, are you going to be in the uh, Salt Lake City again tomorrow, Phil? Uh, no, I'm. Uh, uh, I'm. Uh, the shuttle's picking me up at one thirty. Oh, oh so. I see. Okay, because I was going to say oh. if you had the same problem again tomorrow night, I could call you again. You know. Yeah. No, I'll I'll be on the computer tomorrow night. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me see here. Let me get a little theme song started here. 
What the, what the hell? Well, what do you know? The theme song actually started. Uh, can you all hear it? Good. Yes. Yeah, ain't that some shit? Said the toilet paper to the ass. Yes. Uh, uh, Jeff, thank you. <laughs> By the way, any, anybody watch this show, Preacher? <laughs> and it, it takes place in, he, uh, in last night. It t- part of it takes place in hell, where this guy's been sent to hell and he's hanging out with Adolf Hitler. Oh, and, and, and to show Is how Salt bad, how, to show how bad, so, uh, 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 to show how bad uh, uh, hell is, uh, some guy is on the shitter taking a dump, and when he has to wipe his ass, he has to use gaffer's tape. <laughs> That's a sticky situation. That's hell. Anyway, thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Patrick. Thanks to Phil. Thanks to uh, Brian. Uh, thanks to Mike. Thanks to Scott. Thanks to Rob. And thanks to Tony G. All of you participated tonight. Scott even p- p- piped up a lot, as did Jeff and, and Tony. And I'll see, hopefully tomorrow night it'll all be easy. Well, I just hopefully it, when I call in the Jack's program using my computer, my uh, hardware will be done. Finger fucking Skype and finger fucking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Th- thank you, hey, Brian, Why don't food. you guys wave goodbye, will you? Okay. Bye, bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. That's it for tonight with our uh, citizens panel, and uh, there'll be another citizens panel coming uh, right up on uh, uh, Jack Bishop and Amy Manuel's program, The Intersection. Uh, which will be next over most of this same GabNet network, okay? In the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. Oh, and by the way, I know I, uh, somebody said, are you, are you wearing uh, underpants? No, I was wearing my shorts during the show. Anyway, we'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.